vessel, he immediately called off the rescue. In other words, Phantom jets, already en route from the 6th Fleet, were ordered to turn around and return to their point of origin. Try to let the seriousness of this situation sink in for a moment. Navy fighters launched from the aircraft carriers USS Saratoga and USS America were recalled by the White House. But the blame doesn't stop there. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara and National Security Advisor Walter Rostow at first ordered instantaneous retaliation, but upon discovering that the attack originated from Israel's Haifa base, McNamara called off the exercise. In fact, it was reported later that Robert McNamara was so irate when discovering that Liberty Radio men contacted the USS America that he barked, tell the 6th Fleet to get those aircraft back immediately. Immediately. Due to this traitorous behavior, the USS Liberty had to wait 16 hours after the attack stopped before they were rescued by our military forces. It is the only instance in American naval history that a rescue mission was aborted while an American ship was under attack. In all, the Israeli attack on America's USS Liberty, a ship that sat almost motionless in the water with no offensive weaponry while sailors sunbathed on its deck, lasted for two full hours, equaling the length of Japan's infamous attack on Pearl Harbor. 821 holes were found in the ship, resulting from aircraft rockets, cannon fire, and torpedo blasts, while over 3,000 holes from Israel's machine gun fire were also counted. Far more tragically, the Israelis killed 34 Americans that fateful day, wounded 171 more, and instigated the worst U.S. naval losses since World War II. And even though U.S. Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Joint Chiefs of Staff Admiral Thomas Moore called this attack deliberate, to this day not one guilty party in Israel or the U.S. has been brought to justice. All the for you. thoughts that always come back to us time and time again is how this thing is still being covered up after 40 years. And we know without doubt from the circumstances that it was a deliberate attack. Uh, anyone who looks carefully at the details knows that it was deliberate, and that includes such people as Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, and all of the heads of all of the intelligence organizations. Will the record show that the statements of Mr. Ennis are correct? Here are a few quotes for your consideration. On the strength of intercept transcripts of pilots' conversations during the attack, the question of the attack's deliberateness just wasn't a disputed issue within the agency. Lieutenant General William E. Odom, former director, National Security Agency, interview with David Walsh on March 3rd, 2003, reported in Naval Institute Proceedings, June 2003. Inman said he flatly rejected the crystal thesis that the attack was an accident. Quote, it is just exceedingly difficult to believe that the USS Liberty was not correctly identified. Based on talks with NSA seniors at the time, having direct knowledge of intercepted communications, no NSA official could be found who dissented from the deliberate conclusion. Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, United States Navy, Director, National Security Agency, 1977 to 1981, reported in Proceedings, June 2003. Quote, I can tell you for an absolute certainty from intercepted communications that they knew they were attacking an American ship, unquote. Oliver Kirby, former deputy director for operations and production, National Security Agency. Kirby participated in the NSA's investigation of the attack and reviewed translations of intercepted communications between pilots and their headquarters, which he reports show conclusively that they knew their target was an American ship. Kirby is considered the godfather of the USS Liberty and USS Pueblo intercept programs. From telephone interviews with James Ennis and David Walsh for Friendless Fire, Proceedings, June 2003. In a handwritten note dated 26th August 1967 by NSA Deputy Director Louis W. Tordella reacting to the Israeli court decision exonerating Israelis of all the blame for the Liberty attack, it is stated, quote, a nice whitewash for a group of ignorant, stupid, and inept f***s, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant 
in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. By now it seems that we've all been told the many and widely varying theories of the events of September 11th, 2001. The official story of 9-11 presents that a group of extremist Muslim terrorists, known as Al-Qaeda, planned and orchestrated the attacks. Yet others have told us that among the responsible are U.S. President George Bush Jr., U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney, and a variety of other criminal elements in the United States government. These two conceptions are central to the 9-11 story, while there is some argument on the latter side as to how the events took place. Some theories as to the science of the attacks have presented that the impact of two planes and a fire fueled by jet fuel, which is mostly kerosene, brought down three concrete and reinforced steel buildings. Those structures would be World Trade Center Building 1, Building 2, and World Trade Center Building 7. Others posit that controlled demolitions were planted in the towers. It is not in the scope of this video to prove nor dispute the science of how the towers came down that fateful day. However, it is our belief that among such theories, the case showing demolitions has been the most sound. Our intentions in this chapter are to specifically show you who was responsible for this mass murder of Americans. We will examine a group of people who are a corrosive mafia with a racial and religious cohesion. It will become clear how fraudulent theories concerning 9-11 have been fomented and end up benefiting this group, and how the foundational crime of September 11th has been the catalyst for multiple and far reaching crimes by this well-organized supremacist mafia. It's time we achieve the long-awaited complete truth of what happened on 9-11, because the future of humanity depends upon it. There are two documents which are central to understanding the intricate planning for the events of September 11th. The first is titled, A Clean Break, A New Strategy for Securing the Realm, and shortened to the ACB Doc. The ACB was created in Israel at the IASPS. The core of the document illustrated a systematic plan to conquer the Middle East by engineering a flawless image of Israel and promoting the state as a great ally of the United States. The ACB doc was essentially duplicated in the so-called Republican think tank called the Project for a New American Century, also referred to as PNAC. The same